Well, good evening to the, the few of us who are gathered here tonight. We'll proceed as usual and uh, start with the, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And then we'll start by singing 616, Baptismal Waters Cover Me. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of its sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is true. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, the 22nd chapter. As I was on my way and drew near to Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth whom you are persecuting. Now those who, you, who were with, <clears throat> excuse me, and those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, rise and go into Damascus, and there you will, hold, <clears throat> and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see, because of the brightness of the light, 
I was led by the hand of those who were with me and came into Damascus. And one, Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, well spoken of by, of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see his righteous one, and to hear a voice from the, his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now what do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste, go out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to, <clears throat> far away to the Gentiles. This is the word of the Lord. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it to the attendant and sat down. And all the eyes of and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote uh, you will quote to me this proverb. Physician, heal yourself. What we, have heard, uh, what we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly, I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to uh, Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in this time, of the pro in the time of the prophet of Elijah. And none of them were cleansed, but only Nahum the Syrian. And when, he heard, and when they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. And they rose up, and drove him out of the town, and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. It's amazing how differently, how different things are perceived by different people due to circumstances. Some of you might remember the first presidential um, uh, debate that was televised in 1960 between Richard Nixon and JFK. The, the 70 million people who watched this very first televised debate said that JFK won. But if you were one of the many people who listened, many of the millions of people who simply listened to the radio, it seemed like Nixon had come out on top. The final outcome of that uh, fateful debate was due to various factors was Kennedy closing the six-point lead that Nixon had over him and eventually, lead, uh, eventually winning the election. And it, uh, but we see the, the difference in how people perceived it, whether they watched it or whether they just listened to it. This is just one example, but there are countless uh, of similar to this throughout history. In a certain country, the American Revolution is taught as a, a band of scrappy rebels fighting for their freedom. In another country across the pond, it's presented as a bunch of upstart colonists who didn't want to pay what they owed to their rightful rulers. You probably know which side I fall on this, but then again, I am a little biased in that category. In our readings, we have example in both of our readings, we have examples of this as well. In Luke's gospel, Jesus presents two miracles presented by the prophets Elijah and Elisha in a very different light than his hearers, including us, are used to hearing. When we think about these two miracles, when Elijah goes to the widow and Elisha uh, heals Nahum, the, the Syrian army commander, we often think of these as our triune God showing his people his great majesty so that they will glorify him. But Christ presents this in a very different way, which is showing our triune, or which is our triune God showing his power uh, because his people won't listen to him and have repeatedly gone to follow false idols. So who's right? Well, Jesus. Jesus is always right. Uh, and this gives us a new perspective on these two separate miracles by these two great prophets. It also sets the stage not only for how the Jews are going to react to Paul's sermon, which we will hear next week. They react the same way they react to Jesus, trying to kill him or at least calling for his death. But it also shines a light on Paul's sermon and the version of events we hear here versus the version of events that we hear in earlier, earlier in Acts. We don't have time to go line by line and reread um, everything, so I'm just going to hit the high points. In Acts chapter 9, or Luke's account, it is characterized by the Lord speaking to Ananias, the miracle of Saul's sight being restored when the scales fall from his eyes, Paul preaching in both Damascus and Jerusalem, and the fear that Ananias and the disciples have that Paul is joining their ranks. Whereas uh, Paul's account in Acts 22 focuses on who Ananias was, Paul's baptism, the vision in the temple, and his future preaching to the Gentiles. These events are the same. The outcome is the same. That's what we've been hearing for 10 months at this point. But their perspectives are very different. The focus is very different. So this one's a little bit trickier than earlier. Who's right in this scenario? My one question for the night. There's only like five of you. Come on, somebody. What did you say, Tracy? 
Well, Jesus is always right. You're exactly right. But we're talking about Luke and Paul. Truth is, they're both right, right? They're, there's, uh, both of them are right, unlike our gospel reading today. You see, Luke is a historian as well as being a doctor. Often we give the title of the first church historian to a man named Eusebius, but honestly it, and in truth, it should be bestowed on St. Luke. He faithfully records the history of the first 30 or so years of the church. And his goal is for us to see the history of the church and the start of the spread of the good news of Jesus Christ, the message of salvation across the world. But his perspective is very historical. Whereas Paul is a preacher and an evangelist. His goal is to preach Jesus Christ crucified and risen to all people. Both are good and noble perspectives, and both are needed for our study of God's word and our walk in and our faith life. But because of the different perspectives, we see different focuses on the subject matters. And that's why we get, well, not different narratives, but different focused narratives. And this is why Paul chooses the topics that he does. He doesn't focus or even mention Ananias and the disciples being afraid because it doesn't do anything to help glorify Christ's death and his resurrection. Instead, he mentions how well Ananias is uh, respected because of whom he is preaching to. He doesn't focus on the miracle of the scales falling out of his eyes. Instead, he focuses on the miracle of his baptism, which instead of receiving his sight back, he has now received both salvation and eternal life. And he doesn't focus on preaching in Damascus and Jerusalem. Now, these are both good and noble things that he does. Instead, he focuses on what will come in the future, which is what we have been learning about for a while now, his preaching of Jesus Christ to the whole world. All of this is to glorify our triune God so that he, uh, uh, so his people, that is us, and all who have read this narrative, believe in Christ, his death and resurrection, and will listen to him. But all of this makes us ask, so what? What does this mean for us? Well, last week we talked about our actions speaking louder than words. And part of this is our attitude and how we look at things. You see, whenever we see Paul talk about his suffering, he's not saying, hey, look how much I'm suffering. Feel bad for me. Instead, he shows us the suffering he is enduring because it points to Christ and how much he suffered for us um, on the cross and in his death for each and every one of us. Even in last week and this week's uh, epistle, despite the crowd wanting to kill him, despite knowing that this sermon and testimony probably wouldn't have any impact or do any good, he is still there preaching to these people Jesus Christ crucified and risen. His attitude is Christ first, everything else second. And once again, we see here Paul's ministry and his faith being a wonderful example of the attitude that we are to have as well. Our Savior his death and resurrection, to forgive our sins and promise us eternal life first and everything else next. This is what we see Paul, despite the suffering that he's going through at this time, despite the people yelling to take him away from the earth, which we will see, literally to kill him, we see his attitude pointing directly to Jesus. Now, of course, having a different perspective isn't a bad thing, right? We talked about Luke and Paul having different perspectives, 
But as long as the goal is the same, as long as the focus is on Christ, just like once again we saw with Luke and with Paul. Think about it this way. Our sister church just down the road, that way, Trinity Badger Ranch. Anybody been there? They have a, a drum set and a guitar, an electric guitar. That's okay. Works for them. Not something I think we're planning on doing anytime soon, right? Or you could talk about some of our other churches that are pretty close by that use a hymnal that was printed probably before any of us were born. A good a long time, a very long time before I was born. None of these are bad. They're different perspective. And none of them are bad because all of our goals are the same. Preach Jesus Christ crucified and risen. And this is what we see in Paul's sermon in his attitude and actions tonight, is that um, is to put Christ first in our attitude and our actions so that all may hear of the grace and the mercy and the peace that he offers us in his death and resurrection. This is what we've been seeing Paul do for quite some time, and despite the probably the roughest times yet to come. It is what we will continue to see him do, pointing solely to our Savior Christ and all that he offers us in his death and resurrection. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for, the, for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For, uh, for Steve Ransom's sister-in-law, Diana, who is in the hospital, and for all those who need your care, Lord. We also pray for all of those who are on our hearts at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart.
that by the presence and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless and preserve us. Amen. Go ahead and be seated for our closing Oslin, do you have an, any announcements?
We are. I'll talk to you. Anyone else? All right. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.